Holly Kleppner is our guest here on the program, and I believe uh, Holly is in Charleston. Holly, good morning to you. Good morning. Great to have you with us, the director, I should say, of secondary schools in uh, Berkeley County, uh, formerly principal at Musselman High School. When were you most recently principal at Musselman, Holly? Um, I left the position December of 2021. Okay, and uh, when did you become actively involved at North Middle? Um, actively involved about six weeks ago. Um, prior to that, uh, they were one of the 10 schools that, that I um, work with and support throughout the school year. Okay, very good. Uh, before we get into that, uh, obviously some breaking news yesterday. Ryan Sachs out of Cabell County has been named the new superintendent of Berkeley County Schools. Do you know Ryan in, in any way? I do. Um, just from being at the superintendent's conference, which is where I am right now, um, you know, I have heard many good things about um, Dr. Sachs, um, and I'm anxious to, to uh, get to work with him. Very good. Uh, now on to uh, North Middle and the action plan in place uh, for this school, one of two schools in the state that uh, they have taken over. And obviously this is an issue of great importance, not just uh, in Berkeley County, but around the state when the state gets involved in something like this. Can you tell us about the action plan and some of the major points of it, Holly? Sure. Um, there are actually three improvement areas. Um, that we are focusing on uh, in, in, with, in conjunction with the state. Um, the first one is um, it's a targeted school environment assessment result, which was deemed unhealthy or unsafe conditions for students and employees. So um, that is one area we're focusing on. And then um, it's also uh, it's school's failure to provide high quality and equal education opportunities for students as demonstrated by persistently low academic performance. And then the third area um, is deficiencies in instructional leadership and support for school improvement process. Okay. Can we go through some of these points in terms of how this is going to play out in improving sure. an improvement at North middle? If you could start first with safety. So, um, Safety comes down to when they when you look at the referrals that are put in uh, the Weva system, which is the system that um, it, it has all student information in it. Um, one of the one of the things that was noticed immediately is that staff did not have access to put the referrals into this system. Um, and when when staff does that, it, it pops up on a dashboard, so an assistant principal or principal can immediately go in and address the behavior. Um, and what was happening, uh, it was things like that were coming through emails to um, principals. They were going through another system called IntelliSpark. There was a Google form. So it was, it was scattered around to where things were easily missed or, you know, as a principal, you're out and about. Um, you don't always have time to access your email. So that is just one clear, um, easy fix. That, that we're working um, on with the, the staff to start the school year. Mm -hmm. in, in the report, it had talked about uh, how many students were wandering the hallways in between classes and then during classes uh, as, uh, as really as the focus there. Is there an explanation uh, okay. as to why that was happening and how to improve on that? Um, a lot of that is, uh, you know, when you're working with, with teachers, there were, there were a lot of, of brand new perm sub um, teachers that some literally started the first day the students started. Um, so just learning processes, learning consistency, learning follow through. Um, and if, if students don't know what the expectation is and teachers don't know what the expectation is, um, you know, that's what starts to happen. Uh, you know, things just slowly start to get out of hand. Students will get up and walk out of class. Um, you know, if they need to go to the restroom instead of going through a process, they would just get up and walk out. And those are those are the types of uh, um, issues that just started to get a little bit out of control. You, as you said, you were a principal at Mulsman High School. We've known your name for many years for the job that you did there. Whose job is it during class when students are wandering a hallway to find out why they're in the hallway and to get them where they're supposed to be? Um, that would be, we, we always had, um, the teacher that was 
getting ready to start their planning, would do a sweep of the hallways or the bathrooms just to make sure everyone was in class. But otherwise, um, you know, just taking turns as an administrator walking through the building, uh, we did that frequently. We also had a resource officer that was, um, you know, that, that's what they did constantly was, was just walk around the building and, and check doors and check windows and check students and check bathrooms. Very good. Uh, now, in regards to the other points, the other two points you mentioned at the beginning of the program of helping to fix North Middle School, uh, can you go to point number two and tell me how that one will be effectively implemented? Sure. So the, this one is regarding assessment and the score, the low academic performance. And I think the number one issue there was the setup of the master schedule. Um, and we completely are starting from scratch with the master schedule. And what I mean by that is um, added minutes to um, core content classes, um, removed classes that were irrelevant or weren't targeted to help our students succeed. So we added some intervention um, time. We also added uh, some reading classes that will be, every student will go through for a nine weeks to um, work on vocabulary, work on fluency, uh, high interest reading just to get that confidence for our students to perform better in their other classes. And point number three. Uh, that is um, just helping whoever the instructional leader is that um, will come into North, and I believe that job is posted starting today. Addition uh, specialist uh, in the school daily, uh, whether it's myself or the transition specialist, to work directly with that principal uh, to move them and uh, work toward the areas. Bill? Yeah, good morning, Holly. Uh, there's a lot of questions surrounding uh, uh, North Metal. Uh, were you caught as, as much a surprise as what the our board, local board of education appeared to be, or did you have some anticipation there's going to be a, a damning report coming out? Um, it, I was there. Um, I was at North around 30 times this school year. Uh, so you, you know, I'm a boots on the ground. I look, I, I look around to see where the problem areas are, and you know, you work with the principal in those areas or the assistants, um, and you know, those are things that we're doing on a daily basis. You know, when the when the state came in to do their two reviews, they are, you know, they're there all day. Um, they're looking at specific areas, and um, it's a they're seeing more of a snapshot than you see on a daily basis. Now, were there things that needed um, addressed? Absolutely. Things that needed um, reorganized? Absolutely. But um, in terms of the state coming in and just and, and making this report, you know, you're not, we're not a part of that, and we're, we don't know exactly what they're looking at. Um, and, and they're getting a lot of information off Weavis, and then maybe they're looking at specific areas. So, um, you know, the, they pulled those three improvement areas out and were very clear and had some specific uh, incidents that they, they saw that particular day. So, um, you know, we just have to take that as a, uh, something we need to improve upon and, and go from there. I think what I'm hearing you say is that even though there are areas that need to be improved, that if they had been, the State Board of Education had been looking at it on a long-term basis as opposed to a snapshot, they might have come with somewhat of a different uh, uh, impression. Is that fair to say? Uh, you really can't, in, you know, you really can't anticipate that in one day. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how to um, explain that because they are here to help us uh, without a doubt. But they were looking at specific areas, and those are the areas where um, we, they had incidents at North that day. So, um, you know, they felt North needed support to move forward, and that's what they're doing regarding that. Uh, the problem with North, uh, it's – 
from us on the outside, it's awful easy to simplify a, a complex set of circumstances, and we try to go for what we think the most simple answer is. And that's what I'm going to do right now, and I, I say that because I have very little knowledge of what happened. Was it a leadership problem? Was it the inability to get an adequate number of qualified teachers? Was it a feeder system? What was the reason that we had problems with, with North? That was 100% all three. Okay. Um, and, what, and, and what happens, th- these things don't happen overnight. But when you, you know, when you are constantly having a turnover in staff and there's no consistency, you know, if you ask any ed- educator in the state, consistency is the number one thing you need to improve any school, whether it's uh, academics, discipline, um, you know, good teaching, it has to be consistent. You can't keep, you can't have a different English teacher every single year come in to teach a sixth grade class and expect there to ever be any type of improvement. Holly, this is John Gilstrap. Good morning. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> I want to talk specifically about the, the math scores that came out of South Middle that uh, sixth grade and seventh grade had six uh, percent of the students were uh, at, at grade level for math, and then it got worse at eighth grade, where only 5% were performing at grade. So we have these, uh, the fixes that, assuming that they all work, those are all sort of forward-facing. That fixes the, the, hopefully fixes the system for current second, third, and fourth graders that as they come up. What do we do for the kids that are currently so far behind in the system to bring them up so that when they they get into high school they can actually perform at grade level well one of the things that um we are doing at north um, our eighth graders will be part of a star academy which is a, a national program with um high engagement and it is it is aimed to catch up students uh two years within the one year that they're in the star academy um, it's uh, a lot of hands-on learning, a lot of projects, uh, manipulative, uh, and that's, that's one, one area that we want to focus on. But what I also want to say is in terms of the benchmark testing, when, when, they are, when we are checking them three different times throughout the year with our IXL, it's not reflecting the 6% to 5%. So when they take that one test in the spring, um, I'd say a, a large chunk of that comes down to motivation, um, respect for themselves when they take the, the test, and, and just putting forth their best effort because there's, they don't see any value in doing well on that test. So, unfortunately, it doesn't reflect exactly where North is and the students you know, are at that point. Now, our, every student can improve. There are a lot of... Um, students that are struggling at North, but it's definitely not the best picture of, of what is actually the ability of our students at North, and that's what's so frustrating. But looking at some numbers that they were given at the uh, uh, Board of Education meeting last night, uh, across the board, uh, Berkeley County is not doing as well as the state in uh, reading and mathematics at both of the elementary school and also the high school. Yes, um, and again, you know, the, our, especially like our 11th graders, uh, they are taking a college entrance exam, which is the SAT. Uh, 90% of our students take that, um, in, including special education students. So when you compare that to, to another school, um, and Dale Lee brought this up last night, uh, you know, in Mississippi, 2% of the students take the SAT. So when you compare Mississippi to West Virginia, it makes us look like that, that we are not performing. Um, but all of our students are taking that test. So when you, you know, when you incorporate um, students that are going into a trade and that's what they want to do, they may not put their full effort into a college entrance exam or a special education student that learns differently. So, um, 
you know, you, you've got to you've got to kind of look at, at everything whenever you're viewing uh, the SAT scores. Making a good point, and it's a point that others have made as well that we're not really looking at apples to apples. Uh, of those schools, of those states that have that test the same number and the same uh, and same grade level that that West Virginia does, how does West Virginia compare? Um, can you say that again? Yeah, I'm looking at apples to apples. Yeah. I've heard the argument that it's uh, uh, that we have Mississippi ten, uh, in West Virginia. Okay. They're looking at. Uh, uh, different percent of students taking the SAT. Looking strictly for apples to apples, uh, no, the states that uh, grade or test the same way West Virginia does, how do we compare? So um, if, if you look at the ACT scores, which is another college entrance exam, we're, I think we're in the top 20 um, in the nation in that. Um, if you were looking at just standards like, like Virginia, uh, they do, they call it the SOL, which is their standards of learning. So that would be like our students taking the ISL benchmark testing. That is our actual West Virginia standard, and we do very well there. Um, and it, it's so hard to compare, like you're saying, apples to oranges when you're doing, you know, SAT versus ACT versus the SOL in Virginia. Everybody's giving a different type of test. Now, our college-going students, do, they perform extremely well on the ACT and the SAT. Um, and our college staying rate is higher, especially in Berkeley County. Um, I never, at Musselman, never had the highest college-going rate as the other schools, but I had one of the highest college staying rates because our students that went to college were prepared and were successful and got through that freshman year and uh, graduated. Holly Kuttner so, is our guest. Jimmy we reestablish her, John, first. For those just tuning in, then you can get to your question. Uh, she's in Charleston at a superintendent's uh, meeting right now, and uh, she is the executive director of secondary schools in Berkeley County and is a major part of the North Middle Remediation Plan. Go ahead, John. So with, with all that's happening, what are the metrics for success? How do we know that? the new plans are going to work, whether it's at North Middle or if it's across the, the county. Uh, we, we have test scores are what they are, and instead of comparing them to what's happening in Mississippi, let's compare them just to ourselves. So what is our goal for if, if this year our eighth graders are 18, uh, 18% are at level in uh, South Middle, or at North Middle 5%, what is the goal for next year? One of the one of the big pushes that we have done this year at Berkeley County is rigor, um, and we are going to continue to to have rigorous lessons in our classrooms. And you know, way to give an example of that when you when you teach a skill to a student, um, you know, let's say you teach area to a student and you give them a worksheet and they get um, all 25 right on the worksheet, and then the teacher moves on to the next skill. The problem is we're not asking those students to apply that skill. And that is what is uh, they are stumbling on when they are taking these assessments and and uh, showing what they have actually learned. So the next step would be, uh, you know, to tell them we're going to put carpet in a room. How would you uh, do the area of that room so they're actually applying that skill? So those are the things that we're focusing on to to move the needle in terms of. Um, our student success. But do we have metrics? Do we? How do we know when we're succeeding? Uh, we we are looking at the data and the, the the benchmark testing as we go through the year. We're also pulling teachers together, and there is a big push to train our teachers into how that they are going to teach this, um, you know, to our students. We we have some of the greatest math minds in Berkeley County, but it for some reason is not transferring to our students. So um, we, we are doing regular data team meetings, which is where uh, the math teachers, maybe it's all the Algebra One teachers, it might be just the eighth grade team, they will get together and look at these scores and see where the skills are that our students are missing so we can focus and prioritize um, on those students. And it's like Robin Lopez says, every time she gives her data uh, talks, 
we have to put a face with these test scores. We have to know which students need, um, you know, which skills to push them forward. And sometimes it's just one or two things that are holding them back from being extremely successful. But that's getting, <clears throat> that's getting to know the process. I'm trying to get to to the success. I'm I've I've been a private sector guy my whole life. So when you're trying to grow a business, you tell your managers your department needs to have this much revenue or this many customers or whatever and if and if you don't get to this then you have not been a success and and there are consequences to that. I don't know what that equivalent is in the in the education business, but if we just it seems to me as an outsider <clears throat> that if our goals are to get to know things better and and to understand things better, but there's no actual performance goal. All we're doing is is churning more. We're not actually performing more. Am I missing something? Well, the, in the, the things that I discussed prior, those are the things that will raise the scores because we're focusing on the areas that the that the students are weak in, and they it will show a growth. Um, you know, any time that a teacher has has focused on the individual student and what that student needs and reteaches that skill. It, it's, you know, 99% of the time that student is going to show it when they take the assessment and when we look through our scores. Holly, we're just about out of time, so the final thought is yours. If you have anything else you'd like to relate to our audience right now. Uh, I, I have to give kudos to the staff at North. They, they have been uh, amazing. Uh, this summer they have been in. They, they are looking through student scores. They are placing students where they should be. Um, our assistant principals uh, are, are working right now while I'm in Charleston on the master schedule for next year. Um, they are not taking a break this summer, and they, they have embraced this, and um, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing uh, how well the school year is going to go for North uh, the staff and the students. Holly, thank you so much for your time this morning. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Holly.